13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do by Amy Morin. Number 1. Mentally resilient individuals replace self-pity with gratitude. One day, Amy Morin observed a minor collision. Two vehicles in a supermarket parking lot backed into one another. As Morin watched the drivers exit their cars, she could not help but notice the stark contrast in their reactions. Despite experiencing the exact same accident, the responses were worlds apart. The first driver emerged and almost appeared relieved, grateful that no one was seriously injured and that the incident had not led to severe consequences. In contrast, the second driver felt quite bad for himself, lamenting in his bad luck and questioning why such annoyances always seem to plague him clearly frustrated. This anecdote highlights the first behavior that mentally resilient individuals avoid, wallowing in self-pity. They refrain from sulking, dwelling on misfortunes, or hosting pity parties for themselves. Those who indulge in self-pity often perceive their problems as disproportionately severe, complaining about life's unfairness and eagerly recounting the day's negative events. However, self-pity is not only commonplace, but also pragmatic. It can be profoundly self-destructive, as it not only wastes valuable time, but also trains the mind to fixate on negativity. This fixation breeds further unhappiness, leading to the even greater focus of the downsides of your day and life, while the positive experiences and good fortunes will go unnoticed and unappreciated. The question remains, how can one break free from self-pity? The most potent antidote is gratitude. When trapped in a mindset of perpetual misfortune, pause for a moment. Sit down and think about the good things that have occurred in your life. To maintain this practice, consider keeping a gratitude journal. Recording at least one thing you are grateful for every day. Additionally, verbalizing your gratitude can be beneficial. Share your appreciation for life's gifts with those around you. Gradually, you may adopt the mindset of the first driver. Rather than bemoaning a minor accident, you'll feel thankful that the situation wasn't worse. Remember, all that first driver cared about was, at least no one was hurt. You want to be that person. This shift in perspective brings you one step closer to becoming a mentally resilient individual. Number two. Mentally resilient individuals maintain their personal power and practice forgiveness. Consider Lauren, a devoted mother of two who enjoyed an almost idyllic family life, save for one issue, her overbearing mother-in-law. This woman not only dropped by unannounced, but also constantly criticized Lauren's parenting style and made unkind remarks about Lauren's weight. While Lauren maintained a polite facade, she seethed internally, 
Furthermore, she realized she was spending several hours per week ruminating and complaining about her mother-in-law. Now that's a problem. This situation highlights the second habit that mentally resilient individuals avoid, allowing others to exert power over them. At the heart of Lauren's dilemma was her reluctance to speak up, which led her mother-in-law dictating her emotions and behavior. This habit can manifest in various ways, such as being overly sensitive to criticism, allowing others to provoke anger in you, or succumbing to guilt and agreeing to tasks you would really rather not do, all signs of relinquishing your power to others. So, how can one regain control over their life? Revisiting Lauren's case, she recognized the time and energy wasted on complaining about her mother-in-law and decided to discuss the matter with her husband. Together, they agreed to set respectful, clear, and healthy boundaries. They had a conversation with the mother-in-law, informing her that rather than dropping by unexpectedly, they would regularly invite her to dinner. They also requested she cease criticizing Lauren's parenting approach. Though the mother-in-law initially struggled to adapt, she eventually managed and Lauren regained control over her family and her life. Number three. Mentally resilient individuals consistently embrace change. Richard felt disheartened after being diagnosed with diabetes and learning he was 75 pounds overweight. Determined to make a change, he pledged to abstain from junk food. He emptied his shelves of unhealthy snacks and joined a gym. While these steps appeared promising on paper, reality proved otherwise. Richard soon found himself snacking in front of the TV rather than exercising, and despite his best intentions, he could not stop from going and purchasing more junk food, and he failed to lose any weight. It is true that change is challenging. However, resisting change comes at a significant cost, as it can lead to feelings of stagnation while others around you continue to grow. So, how do mentally resilient individuals approach change? Primarily, they sidestep the most significant pitfall, overwhelming themselves with too much change all at once. This was Richard's mistake. His strategies were too extreme and unrealistic all at one time. How do you go from eating complete junk food to completely healthy and no exercise at all to exercising quite intensely all at once? He was setting himself up for failure. Good intentions, poor execution. To effectively embrace change, consider these two tips. First, Break down your ambitions into smaller, more attainable chunks. Focus on incremental change rather than dramatic shifts. Richard eventually adopted this approach, aiming to lose just five pounds as a first step, instead of attempting to lose the whole 75 pounds at once. Second, devise a plan that includes concrete action steps that are easy to follow. 
For instance, Richard started a food journal to monitor his eating habits and began preparing lunch rather than dining out. He scheduled three gym visits per week in advance and committed to taking short walks with his family after dinner on other days. Mentally resilient individuals handle change by avoiding the intimidating all-or-nothing approach and opting for smaller, more realistic goals accompanied by concrete daily actions. By making the change less daunting, there is no longer any reason to shy away from it. You got this. Number four, mentally resilient individuals avoid being distracted by factors beyond their control. One day, James planned an afternoon of whale watching with his daughter. Such outings had become rare and treasured moments since his divorce from his former wife, who had been granted primary custody. Complicating matters further, the divorced parents were vying for their daughter's affection by trying to outdo one another with gifts and exciting activities. When James discovered that his ex-wife had taken their daughter whale-watching just one week earlier, seemingly to undermine his plans, he became irate. Instead of savoring the precious time he did have with his daughter, he spent the afternoon sending angry texts to his ex-wife, ultimately spoiling his time with his daughter. This scenario demonstrates James getting upset over a situation he simply did not have control of. Like many people, he yearned for complete control, including dictating others' actions. Unfortunately, this mindset only exacerbated the situation and detracted from his already limited time with his daughter. In contrast, mentally resilient individuals cultivate a balanced sense of control. They discern between what they can and cannot influence, investing their time and energy where they know they can influence and control. The first step involves recognizing that certain aspects of life are beyond your control. For example, one cannot force a child to be an a student, nor can you make people follow your advice or control what the weather is going to be tomorrow. You can't control that, so worrying about it is not an effective use of your time. After accepting that some factors are out of your control, focus on what lies within your sphere of influence and make the best of your circumstances. Returning to James' situation, he eventually acknowledged that he could not change his ex-wife's behavior or control how she spent time with their daughter. Instead, from that point on, he chose to maximize the quality of his time with his daughter, because that is all he could control. Rather than complaining or engaging in legal battles over custody, James learned to be more present with his child and cherish every moment he did have with her. Number five, constantly seeking to please others is unsustainable, and being prepared to occasionally displease someone makes you more resilient. Consider Megan. She was consistently stressed, feeling overwhelmed by requests from all directions, 
baking muffins for church members, babysitting for her sister, or handling last-minute favors for her cousins. It soon became evident that Megan's stress stemmed from her inability to say no. In other words, she was a people pleaser. While being kind is commendable and a good thing, it can be problematic if you are excessively accommodating. People pleasers are often taken advantage of because they would rather agree than risk conflict. They are continuously concerned about others' opinions of themselves and not as worried about what they think of themselves. They go to great lengths to appear likable, often at the expense of their own desires and needs. The issue with this behavior is clear. If you are constantly prioritizing others' needs, your own needs go unmet. Not only is this extremely taxing, but it can also harm your relationships. In Megan's case, her consistent acquiescence to her cousin's short-term requests led to frustration and irritability towards her own family, sometimes causing her to miss dinner or be unavailable to put her children to bed because she was doing a favor for a cousin. If you recognize yourself as an overly agreeable person, here are two tips. First, remember that it is not your responsibility to keep everyone in your life happy all the time. It is acceptable for others to feel angry or upset occasionally because you need to take care of your own life. They are adults and they are capable of coping with negative emotions just like you are. Second, adopt a practical approach when asked for favors. Take some time before you commit to a yes or even a no. Take a little bit of time. Think about it. This is the advice Megan received from a friend. Previously, when someone asked her for something, she felt pressured to automatically say yes, even if she didn't want to. Megan started using a simple script, such as, Thanks for asking, let me check my calendar, and I'll get back to you shortly. This response provided Megan with the time she needed to make a decision more comfortably and at an empowered state of mind. And she learned one very small but powerful word. No. Number six. Mentally strong individuals are unafraid of taking calculated risks. When Dale shared his long-held dream of opening his own furniture store with his wife, her skepticism was palpable. He could not blame her. Why would he leave his stable job as a high school teacher for such a risky venture? So, he continued in his familiar role, yet suppressing his true ambition only intensified his frustration. Eventually, he became disheartened and depressed, trapped in a dilemma about his future. Let us examine how mentally strong people approach risks. Like Dale, many individuals are naturally risk-averse, fearing potential consequences and imagining worst-case scenarios. Rather than pursuing their dreams, they find themselves ruminating on what life might have offered had they only dared to take action. What sets mentally strong people apart is their willingness to take calculated risks, which they achieve in two steps. 
First, they develop a comprehensive and realistic understanding of the potential dangers and benefits. They ask themselves, what is the worst thing that could realistically happen? Conversely, what is the best possible outcome? Second, they refine their approach to minimize risks involved. Many people face life decisions with an all-or-nothing mindset, believing they must either achieve resounding success or be condemned to failure. However, there is often a middle ground. Dale realized this, understanding that he did not need to choose between his day job and his dream. He could maintain his teaching position while launching his furniture business part-time, working evenings and weekends on the furniture business. Rather than investing in a brick-and-mortar store, he opted to sell his creations online, considering a physical storefront only if demand warranted it. Dale's mood improved dramatically as he followed the path of mentally strong individuals, embracing a calculated risk. Number 7. Embracing the past makes you stronger, but it requires specific steps to achieve. Gloria's relationship with her 28-year-old daughter was fraught with challenges. It was evident that her daughter was caught in a cycle of self-destructive behavior, constantly changing boyfriends, struggling to maintain a job, and repeatedly moving back home. However, Gloria remained silent, inadvertently enabling this pattern due to the guilt she felt and the shame over not being more present in her daughter's life when she was younger. In other words, Gloria was so trapped by the past that she could not move forward, and that was now hurting her daughter. Gloria's story illustrates a crucial lesson. To become mentally stronger... It is essential to stop obsessing about the past. This habit takes many forms. Reliving certain moments. Wondering how life would have turned out only if you had made that different choice. Or believing that rekindling a past relationship will fix everything. While some reflection is healthy... Excessive rumination is often harmful. So, how can you stop dwelling on the past? The key is to make peace with it and then move forward. First, accept what has happened. Understand that you can not change the past, which may involve forgiving someone who has caused you pain, by the way. Second, Move forward intentionally. When you catch yourself revisiting past events, make a conscious effort to shift your thoughts. For instance, start planning your next vacation. Better yet, set new goals for your future. As you develop the habit of focusing on the future, hey, you, you're just not going to have any time for the past anymore. You're not going to be thinking about the past if you are focusing on the future. Throughout our discussion, we have touched on various habits. But it is essential to recognize that habits come in many forms. In Gloria's case, her thought patterns were problematic as they were rooted in the past. This contrasts with Richard who found himself snacking in front of the TV despite wanting to lose weight. We're looking at a habitual behavior with Richard's situation. 
And let's not forget James, whose emotional habits led him to become unnecessarily upset over his ex-wife's actions. The takeaway is that if you want to build mental strength, you must be aware of the three levels of mental strength. Thoughts, behaviors, and emotions. Some bad habits may originate at one level, but actually spill over on another level. Fortunately, improving one aspect can positively impact the others as they are all interconnected. Number eight, mentally strong individuals avoid making the same mistakes and exercise self-discipline to achieve this. Let's travel back in time to a small town in mid-19th century Massachusetts, where businessman Rowland Macy has just opened a dry goods store. He made a critical error in choosing a location that was a little too quiet? resulting in significant difficulties attracting customers. In an attempt to generate interest in his struggling store, Macy organized a large parade throughout the town, concluding at his shop. Unfortunately, the day of the parade was unbearably hot, and no one showed up. He fell so far into debt that he had to close his business. However, Macy learned from this experience and vowed not to repeat the same mistake. When he opened his next Macy Dry Goods store, he selected a prime location in downtown New York. It was a massive success. Macy's went on to become one of the largest chain stores globally and still holds an annual parade just in the fall to avoid the heat. That is learning from your mistakes. Roland Macy's story demonstrates another trait of mentally strong people. They analyze and learn from their mistakes to prevent repeating them in the future. To learn from your mistakes, take the time to ask yourself these questions when things go wrong. What did I do wrong? What could I have done better? And what can I do differently next time? Of course, knowing what you need to do is different than actually doing it. These are two separate things, after all. To break bad habits once and for all, you must practice self-discipline. Here are three simple strategies to become a more disciplined person. First, keep your goal in mind. Visualize the sense of accomplishment you will feel when you have achieved it, such as the satisfaction of completing your novel. This will make it easier to sit down and write on evenings and weekends when you are tempted to just watch a little TV, play a little video games, you know what I'm saying? Second, make a list of past mistakes that you do not want to repeat. Carry this list with you at all times, and when you feel like you're about to make the same error, you take that list out and you read it to remind yourself. Lastly, make it more difficult to make those mistakes. For example, if your goal is to save money for a dream trip, but you tend to overspend when you're out with friends, take only a small amount of cash, leave your credit card at home, and then go out with your friends. This way, 
you will be a lot less likely to splurge. Number nine. Mentally strong individuals do not harbor envy for others' success. Instead, they seek collaboration and mutual growth. If you have ever found yourself feeling disheartened while scrolling through the seemingly perfect lives of your peers on social media, this message is for you. In 2013, researchers published a study titled Envy on Facebook, a Hidden Threat to Users' Life Satisfaction. The findings revealed that witnessing others' successes and happiness can cause feelings of envy and even anger, particularly when it comes to vacation photos or an abundance of birthday wishes. If this resonates with you, take note. This emotion is called resentment. And, as you may expect, it is not a trait exhibited by mentally strong people. When you perceive others as much more successful than yourself, it is natural to feel envious of their good fortune. You might maintain a polite smile on the outside, but inside you seethe with jealousy when your neighbor shows off their brand new Tesla. You might look at my Tesla, MacBook Tesla, what was once a pleasant garden party suddenly becomes a mood-dampening experience. Resentment often stems from personal insecurities and is especially prevalent when you are unclear about your own desires. For example... If a friend is constantly traveling the world for important business trips, and your initial reaction is, "Ah, I wish I had that lifestyle, consider if that is actually what you would really want. Just a moment ago, when you were scrolling through your feed, weren't you just longing for more quality time with your family? And moments before that, you were longing for a better body? What is it that you really want? It is crucial to identify your genuine priorities. To combat resentment, first, gain clarity on your definition of success and accomplishment. If your New Year's resolution involves biking to work more frequently, it is unlikely you'll envy your neighbor's new car. That's not something you even want in that situation. Hey, problem solved. Another strategy for overcoming resentment is adopting a collaborative mindset. Life is not a never-ending competition where you must outperform everyone around you. Instead of engaging in rivalry, focus on cooperation. While you might secretly resent your brother's financial success, consider asking him for advice and learning from his experience. It is challenging to harbor negative feelings towards someone who is actually helping you, right? Number 10. Mentally strong individuals persevere through adversity and to practice self-compassion when faced with failure. Thomas Edison, known for inventing the light bulb, also created devices such as the electric pen and the so-called ghost machine. Although these inventions were largely unsuccessful, Edison did not view them as failures. 
Instead, he saw each attempt as an opportunity to learn and experiment, bringing him one step closer to his successful inventions. However, this optimistic outlook on failure is not normal. When most people experience setbacks, like dropping out of college or losing a significant client, they often feel ashamed rather than embracing the learning opportunity. As a result, some may develop a habit of giving up whenever they encounter obstacles. To cultivate mental strength, giving up should not be an option. Here are two tips for building resilience in the face of failure. 1. Abandon unproductive beliefs about success and failure. When faced with challenges, it is easy to fall back on excuses such as not being talented enough or smart enough. However, research shows that consistent practice can often trump natural talent. If you put in enough effort and time, you will likely surpass those who don't. Additionally, while intelligence may provide an initial advantage, perseverance has been shown to be more critical of a factor in long-term achievement. 2. Embrace self-compassion during difficult times. More often than not, you are your own worst critic. Being overly harsh on yourself can lead to feelings of inadequacy and resignation. Instead, treat yourself with the same compassion you would extend to a friend. Recognize that nobody is perfect, including you. And be kind to yourself when acknowledging your weaknesses. This approach will help you develop a more realistic understanding of what is possible and encourage perseverance in the face of failure. Number 11. Mentally strong individuals embrace solitude and use meditation to enhance their resilience. Meet Vanessa. She is struggling with a specific issue. Although exhausted from her demanding workdays, she finds it difficult to fall asleep. Her mind races with the thoughts about the day's events and upcoming tasks in the following days. During the day, she works as a successful real estate agent, consistently on the move and engaged in life. When asked, how often she spends time alone, simply relaxing and allowing her thoughts to flow, she responded, Never. Why would I? For many people, taking time to be alone and unwind is not high on their list of priorities. Some view it as unproductive or even intimidating, feeling uncomfortable with silence and solitude. They fill their schedules with social engagements, and when alone, they rely on their phone and background noise from the television to stimulate that mind and feel like someone is present. However, mentally strong individuals recognize the value of solitude. While excessive alone time can be harmful, especially when accompanied by feelings of loneliness, research indicates that developing solitary skills can lead to improved mental well-being, life satisfaction, and better stress management. 
Importantly, spending time alone can help recharge your mental and emotional batteries. So, how can you become more at ease with yourself and your thoughts? It is common to dismiss alone time as trivial and expendable. To prioritize it, schedule regular appointments with yourself. Add solo dates to your calendar and inform your family and friends that you will be unavailable during certain times. Once you have designated time for solitude, engage in activities that encourage self-reflection and personal growth. Keep in mind that watching TV, browsing social media, or watching cat videos on YouTube doesn't count. Instead, make space for introspection and self-discovery. Consider journaling or practicing meditation or mindfulness to quiet your mind and cultivate inner peace. Vanessa, too, adopted this approach. She developed a routine of dedicating time to meditation and mindfulness practices in the evenings. As a result, her racing thoughts subsided significantly, and she soon found herself sound asleep. Number 12. Many individuals possess an entitlement mentality, but mentally strong people Focus on giving rather than taking. Lucas was not well-liked among his colleagues. Despite being a recent college graduate and a newcomer to the workforce, he acted as if he knew everything. He frequently offered unsolicited advice to his more seasoned co-workers, assuming that he was a highly valuable employee deserving of a leadership position. Instead of promoting him, however, Lucas's boss advised him to change his approach, as his overbearing behavior irritated his colleagues. In essence, he came across rather... entitled. While this may seem unrelatable... Hey, of course, it's not us. We all have a little bit of Lucas within us. To some extent, we are all prone to this feeling as though the world owes us something. The issue is that the more you believe you deserve something, the less likely you are to actually go out and earn it. If you expect the world to cater to you, you will demand what you want instead of working for what you can get. Moreover, harboring unrealistic expectations about what you should receive can be quite off-putting to those around you, particularly those who are working hard and succeeding. When people perceive someone as primarily taking rather than giving, they tend to avoid that person. So, how can you overcome your sense of entitlement? First and foremost, recognize it. Feeling entitled does not necessarily mean you're acting like you're royalty. Most people exhibit more subtle forms of entitlement. It is often concealed within your thought patterns. If you believe you are exceptional, think a rule maybe doesn't apply to you because it's illogical, or simply believe, hey, life isn't fair. I deserve better than this. These are indicators of an entitled mindset. Instead, let us practice humility. Begin by acknowledging your own weaknesses. It may be difficult to accept, but you are not perfect. 
like everyone else, you have flaws, insecurities, and characteristics that make you less than perfect. And that is okay. That makes you human. Additionally, let us approach critical feedback with greater humility. Since we aren't perfect, the other person may have a valid point. We may not fully agree, but dismissing them as foolish is not very helpful. Ultimately, Lucas managed to recognize the negative impression he left on his co-workers and committed to change. He stopped assuming he knew everything and became more receptive to learning from those around him. With this newfound attitude, he might eventually earn that promotion after all. Number 13. Mentally strong individuals understand that achievements take time and that progress is not always immediately visible. Marcy's most prominent weakness was her infamous impatience. When her children or colleagues failed to keep up with her pace, she would exclaim, I'm not getting any younger. I don't know if that's how she talked, but that's how it sounds in my head. She read countless self-help books, but felt disheartened when they did not magically transform her life overnight. After all, she's not getting any younger. Marcy gave up on therapy just after a few sessions because she just didn't see the instant results she desired. She was desperately searching for a shortcut, a magic pill that would eradicate her dissatisfaction with her life. Regrettably, as mentally strong people are aware, such a pill does not exist. In a world of same-day delivery, on-demand streaming, and fast food, most individuals have grown accustomed to obtaining what they want now. However, if instant gratification becomes a pervasive expectation about life, well, you're bound to see some challenges. The harsh reality is that change is difficult and progress is not always immediately evident. How you cope with this reality is crucial. If you are like Marcy, you might become easily discouraged and abandon your efforts prematurely, thus missing out on the unique benefits that come with long-term commitment. Some accomplishments, such as earning a degree, making a significant career move, or achieving an artistic breakthrough, can require years of hard work, perseverance, and seemingly unrewarded effort. The first step is embracing the long haul and establishing realistic expectations. If you anticipate swift and effortless success, you are setting yourself up for disappointment and frustration. Additionally, be cautious of rigid deadlines for your goals. While it is beneficial to have a rough idea of when you would like to complete a task, treating it as an all-or-nothing situation can backfire. Furthermore, cultivate perseverance. Make a conscious effort to resist instant gratification more frequently. Say no to the tempting chocolate or that impulsive online shopping. However, even with strong self-discipline, you will need moments of accomplishment 
Create these moments for yourself by breaking down your primary goal into smaller chunks, shorter term objectives, and celebrate when you achieve them. Accomplishing milestones one after the other will invigorate you for the overall journey and help you achieve your ultimate goal in life. This concludes 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do by Amy Morin.